Welcome to The Noble Marriage, where we have real, raw, and relatable conversations all about life and marriage. Hi, I'm Adele. I'm Travis. Welcome to episode eight. (laughs) Welcome to episode nine. (laughs) Not eight. We are on episode nine. This is going to be our favorite. No, this will be my favorite, I think. I feel like every one of them is my favorite, honestly. Yeah, especially one through seven, one through eight. Yeah. Yeah. So if you are just joining us, this is episode nine, and it is kind of an ongoing story that our hopes is that you as our viewer will be able to put yourself in our story with your own story and find relatability. Because what this channel is all about is finding healing from the lies that the enemy has written on our heart. That's really like the gut of what we're talking about here, but Mm -hmm. we're having to lay a lot of foundational work to get there. And it starts with our story, which has a lot of ups and downs in it. It's actually very engaging. And, uh, I was captivated, especially the part we're going to read today. I was just like, man, I'm amazed. So I'm hoping that you guys are going to get the same from reading our book as well, which by the way, we are finished writing. We just finished writing and the first edits, and now we're doing our second edits while we read it to each other. Yeah, that's been fun. I've really enjoyed that process. I can't wait to even talk more about how we like how we do the writing and the reading and how we process through it. I don't know yeah. if that's another episode or another show for another time. So I have gratitude for you, and it actually is around our book. I am just so grateful to learn more of your heart and who you are and how you got to be you through reading your portions of the book. It's just been so incredible for me because I feel like we've gotten to know each other on a level that's already deep. And now I just feel like I'm, I'm seeing your heart on a, a, a whole new level. I'm just so grateful for your openness, your vulnerability and transparency mm-hmm. that you show every time in the book. Thank you for saying that. I, I received that and it's, it's interesting you bring that up because what goes on for me is I really don't want to share. I really don't want to be transparent. I really don't want to be like my first instinct is not necessarily transparency, honesty, and just sharing. That's not my first yeah. instinct to do. That actually has come up a lot for me this week of like, and I know it's the enemy. He's like, can you even believe what people know about your past? You just share it all. And Last like, week you shared that oh, you smoked. Oh, maybe I shouldn't be sharing. <laughs> Last week you shared you smoked cigarettes. I know. What was my mother going to think? <laughs> I'm sorry, mom. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, it, it's all the enemy, and he doesn't want us to be sharing because people are going to get healing mm. through our book. The Holy Spirit wrote this book. So if you haven't already tuned in, you guys, you want to tune into this because it is transformational, and we just can't wait to see how it's going to do that. But we're sharing here to give you a glimpse and a sneak peek of what's coming. Yes, and in this episode, we're going to talk about processing emotions in a healthy, God-honoring way. Because, we, yes. listen, we all have emotions. And a lot of the work we do, I want to talk about that real quick. A lot of the work that we do is we help people go back into their lives. Not to and, dwell on it. Not to dwell on it, but to go back and see where the traumas and things that happened in our lives, where emotions got stuck. Mm-hmm. Because, listen, we're born and then things happen. And when things happen at an early age, if you don't have a parent or a guardian who can teach you how to process emotions in a healthy way, you're going to figure it out on your own. And the way we figure it out on our own is just like, I don't know what to do with this. So I'm just going to try to stuff it and I'm going to try to, to make this right around me. And the enemy knows that by internalizing whatever this emotion is, it must be about me. 
Mm-hmm. Well, the enemy's whisper, he's right there waiting for that event to happen so he can write lies that we'll believe because we're kids and we don't know how to process life. Right, right. That is my number one mission as a mother. Help my daughter be able to process emotions because I know if she can do that, she can handle anything in life. Yes. <laughs> number one mission. Yeah. So I, I would just, uh, I want to say it's your number two mission. <laughs> your number well, one mission will always be in your family to lead people to Christ. But I get what you're saying. Yeah. I'm not trying to correct you. Um, I just want our audience to hear where your heart would be in that. Sure. God first. Yeah. And but processing emotions process. is important. And, and what we're bringing up is it's not a Travis and Adele thing to process emotions. This is a human thing that we all are going to experience emotions And some of them are really strong, and some of them have to do with the traumas we've experienced in life, the things we've seen, the experiences that we've had. And then what do we do with Mm -hmm. those feelings and emotions that we have? Yeah. Yeah, because this story from when you were a police officer is how to handle it in an unhealthy way. But that didn't just start with this incident. You learned as a kid how to deal with emotions. Mm -hmm. So you dealt with emotions as an adult, the same way as a kid. And, you know, it's, we all deal with tough things in life. So while you may not be a police officer going through a traumatic incident, you've been through something that was painful. And that's what we want you to consider as we share this. And as we share how to do, excuse me, how to work through emotions in a healthy way. Okay, so let's jump into the book. Mm. Oh, and let me just say, this is a a bit of a heavy story um, because it does involve a death. And so I just wanted to prep you for that, for whoever may be around listening. It's um, it's a tough story. Yeah, thanks for, for saying that. Okay. On my first day as a certified police officer, I was fresh out of the academy, and I received a tough call. I responded to a home where a young teen had shot and killed himself in his bedroom. His family was in the next room, and his brother, mother, and father. It was a tough start to my career facing such a tragic situation. I will never forget the images, smell, and intense heat of the wood-burning stove on that cold January night in that home. I kept myself professional the whole time, and I investigated, took pictures, measured distances, collected evidence, and tried my best to comfort the family. I then went back to the law enforcement center where I wrote my police report. I put my evidence into the evidence locker. I was able to push all the emotions and visuals away for several hours while I did this. Yeah, let's pause right there. I am, what came up for me is this was your first day on the job. And I'm just so curious, what did you do to prepare yourself emotionally for that first day? What did I do to prepare myself emotionally for the first day? Hmm. Yeah, there's, I I didn't prepare myself emotionally at, Hmm. at all. I prepared, you know, my uniform, shiny, crisp. My shoes look good. My, uh, all my tools were on my tool belt. Your shoes um, were shiny. In, in fact, law enforcement, thank God it has changed since I was in. And now you don't, you wouldn't go to a call like that on your own, on your first day. It has changed. They have field training officers now where you're always in a training program and they equip you for things like this. But that was not so for me. They gave me this box that they opened up this box and they said, here are the keys, pick yours. Uh, your car keys. And so I picked my car keys and then I went out and got in my car and that was the first call I got. Wow. On my own. Now another another person showed Mm. up with me, but yeah. I mean, let's just talk about who does have the opportunity to emotionally prepare yourself for a trauma. (laughs) 
We don't. Typically, they're just going to, they're going to come. Trauma happens. Yes. And then there are emotions to process, but it's not like we think in advance, I'm going to emotionally prepare myself for this trauma that's about to come around the corner and hit me in the face. Which would be great. Like if you had a forewarning to do that, it would be great to be able to do. Yeah. And we all have tough things that happen, events that happen in our life that we don't know how to process. And this is one of them. Mm. So I would love for you just to share a little bit more. What was that really like for you to experience that on your first day? Mm. Yeah, I, um, how old were you first? 23. Yeah. Young. Yeah. It was either 22 or 23. And what was, what was the question? How did I process my emotions? No. What was it like? What was it like you? for me? I, um, man, I don't know exactly how to describe what it was like for me. It was in intense. It was something I obviously have never experienced before. And as a, a police officer, like, I don't know, I'm, I'm new, so I don't know how to handle my emotions in this. I don't know how to handle the com- a conversation with my coworkers about this and what I saw and what they saw, because they saw the same thing I did. Yeah, I imagine you were in shock. Yes, that's a good way Complete to say it. Complete shock of not even knowing what was next for you, but you were in like work mode maybe. That's exactly just right. like do what I need to do, but I imagine it was just so incredibly difficult to start your career off like that. Yeah, one of the biggest things for me was just being with the family during that yeah. experience. And obviously they had some really strong emotions that they were going through Man, yeah, I bet. that was probably the, one of the toughest parts is dealing, you know, being with them and being present with them. And obviously I have no words, the right words to say, I don't know what to say. Um, so I, I have that going on for me and then what, how am I supposed to process this? And then I also have in my, my mind, my professionalism of that I have work to do. There's a job that I'm actually doing in this that needs to be done. And, And so I'm able to somehow push off any emotions, Mm. which I've been able to get really good at through my law enforcement career is Mm. pushing those emotions off to be able to handle whatever is there for me. Yeah. Yeah. I got to see the impact of that for sure, because you weren't emotionally sharing with me at home, but it was kind of like you had learned to turn it off, disconnect. Oh, I didn't want to talk a lot more about that. (laughs) Yeah. Some of those things I didn't, I never want to share with you. Yeah. They are, they're just tragic. Right. To experience. So I'd love for you to continue reading. Oh, when I got off work that night, I walked out to my car and sat down and started my drive home. I broke into an intense sob before pulling out of the police parking lot. I cried and felt like I couldn't stop crying. And instead of driving home, I drove to my mom and dad's house, woke them up, and then cried with them for a long time. Mm. Mm. I imagine that was your safe place to go. It must have been because there was no forethought Mm. in, in that. Yeah. In my, in my mind, that was this, that was the safety for me. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to share with the audience, this is before Travis and I had met each other. And so I wasn't in the picture of this Mm -hmm. at all, but I remember you sharing this story with me. And I remember saying to you, I want to be the person you come to. If something like this were to ever happen, like I desperately desired for that in our relationship. And I really get the need to disconnect because it's like you would be living with all, I mean, you experienced traumatic event after event, after event, after event in law enforcement, like they were stacking up Yeah, and you weren't processing. No, not at all. Not in a healthy way. 
how did you emotionally prepare yourself to go back to work the next day? Because before you answer that, you know, after a traumatic event, maybe for you, it was, um, like sexual abuse, physical abuse, maybe a death close to you. It could even be betrayal, Mm -hmm. you know, this traumatic event. How do you pick yourself back up after that and go back? So obviously I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what to, how to process this, but I did eventually go home. I did eventually go to sleep and I was able to go back into work the next day. And it was like heavy, heavy in my spirit, heavy on me. I'm like, what do I do with this? Do I talk to somebody? Is there a program or something I should be doing? I, I don't know. And maybe it's not that big of a deal. Maybe, you know what? Maybe this is normal. And everybody goes through it in law enforcement. And it's yeah. not that big of a deal. And why am I, why is it bothering me so bad? Why do I have these emotions? You just need to toughen up, boy. I probably just need to toughen up. But I don't know. And I don't know what to say or talk about with anyone either. Yeah. And so I just don't say anything and I just go to work. Yeah. And let's just talk about why is it even important to process our emotions and feelings from anything that, and, and trauma doesn't have to be big. Like this is a big event, but it doesn't have to be. Yeah. It can be big and small. So why is it important? One of the main reasons processing emotions is important is because we're not meant to handle them. We're not meant to keep on them. You know, I've heard it said that emotions really last about 90 seconds to 120 seconds. That's what they're meant to last. Meant to last. The reason they last longer than that is the significance we give those emotions and then we hold on to them like we should be keeping them and holding them. That's what gives the significance to the emotion. So it's the, not like we think that through, though. No, no, it's not thought through. Yeah. So you, you asked, your question was, how do we process them? Emo- what's, yeah, the what's the importance of processing the emotion? The importance is freedom. Yes. The importance is freedom. Like if I were to take you down the road to the future, the future importance of being able to process emotions is freedom in your spirit, freedom in your mind, freedom to be able to be who it is God called you to be and not be stuck Mm -hmm. in these lies that the enemy will write and keep us stuck in life. Right, because the lie of the enemy is you can't talk to anybody about this. You have to keep this to yourself, which causes us as humans to isolate, withdraw, retract ourselves, shut down. Yeah, go into this shell. And this just means I just can't talk about these things. And I had my own flavor of this, too. I felt like I could not talk to people about my emotions. They didn't understand or get me. And you probably experienced the same thing yourself in your life. There's probably emotions, feelings that you have. You're like, I I can't share this with anyone. Speaking of anyone, did you feel like you could show what was going on for you in front of colleagues? Not at all. Not at all. But I was looking. I was looking at other colleagues. What are they talking about? Because I wanted them to to start talking about, you know, how they process this. Right. Because you're looking to them for help. Yeah, let's read the next portion. The next day, I went to work, and I had three packets of strawberry jelly in my police memo box. I walked over and pulled these packets of jelly out and was looking at them and was curious why these random things would be in my official police memo box. Then I heard some laughing behind me, and my supervisor and a few other officers were snickering about the brain and blood matter from the boy and associated with strawberry jelly, and I was Mm. shocked at this type of nasty humor. You know, when I was in the military, I never experienced anything like this type of behavior before. Is it funny? Maybe it's funny and I'm missing something here. Is there something wrong with me that I don't find it funny? These officers in the room are seasoned veterans. And obviously, 
know what they are doing and have been doing it for a long time. Who am I to question them? I was confused. Mm. I bet you were. You know, hey, he, hold on. I'm just sorry. Oh. I'm just sorry you went through that. Mm. Because as a 23 year old young man, I imagine that was life altering to see that. But also realizing you need to toughen up this heart of yours that's sensitive to death. Yeah. Because people are laughing about it. And I know humor can be a coping mechanism, but man, is it insensitive? Yes. So what I ended up learning is humor was how I got through humor and sarcasm and this jadedness that I had in my life was how I got through my life from, from then on really. Mm. And it was the humor became crude and not, not good. Yeah. Not a great way to process. It is a way to process things. It is a, uh, a way to process emotions. It's yeah. not healthy. Let me take it back. It is not a way to process. It is a way that people attempt to process emotions. Yeah. So how did this experience make you feel towards your coworkers after that? I, I mean, I'm mm. just putting myself in your shoes and that would have, I mean, that was your first day on the job. Now it's second day and you learned a lot about the culture and people around you. When I told you a while ago that I had no context for this. I was in the military for four years prior to this. This is the type of behavior that I, I not experienced a lot of really crazy behavior in the military, but nothing like this, nothing like this. And so I did not know how to, to take my coworkers. I did not know how to process it with them. What went on in my mind is obviously I, there's something wrong here. Sure. Because all these guys have been doing this for years and years and years. They know what they're doing. They're obviously, they were there with me last night. They're fine today. Yeah. But are they? Right. <laughs> are they? Right. Yeah. And we'll yeah. see, maybe not. We'll see a little bit later in my story. Yeah. Let's read. Okay. Because of this encounter and how many coworkers were joking and laughing about it, I thought that I could not express the sadness I was feeling for the family and the loss of this poor kid's life cut short. I felt like I needed to figure out how to joke about these devastating incidents. No worries there. It happened pretty fast. I became calloused and desensitized to other sufferings and pain. I was able to see why my fellow officers and supervisor were laughing and joking in that first week of my career. The world is full of some really bad people, behaviors, circumstances, and events. I saw so much death, pain, abuse, neglect. And as a first responder, we are subjected to experience great quantities of this on a routine and consistent basis over a prolonged period of time. Mm. That right there is what caught up with you. It'll catch up. And while if you have a, a career that is high intensity like this, that you're being exposed constantly to... To human depravity. Yeah. Thank you. I mean... What you are exposed to on a regular basis is significant trauma. It really is. And I really wish that we would have had the support and the help, even in our marriage, for the things that you experienced. And we're going to share in upcoming episodes more of that. But I wish you would have had the help back then, too. Me, too. Me Somebody too. to come alongside you and say, hey, Here's a healthy way of how you can process what you just were exposed to last night because it's tough. Mm. So I would love to actually share what are unhealthy ways that people process stuff like this. 
And then I would love to share what are healthy ways to process trauma and experiences in our life. And this goes for anyone who's experienced pain in your life, not just significant trauma. Because processing emotions is widespread. (laughs) We need to know how to process when you prick my heart or a traumatic event like this because we still process the same, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, the way we process emotions in unhealthy ways are, and I'm just probably going to name a few, substance abuse, avoidance and denial, Mm -hmm. self-harm, emotional binge eating, isolation, overworking, aggression, Mm -hmm. excessive distractions like screens, gaming, social media, media. shopping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like for me, uh, binge eating became a thing in my life that was way out of control and it was all to run from things that I had experienced in my life to run from the pain because it brought some kind of pleasure, which it didn't because then I was like shameful afterwards, but we all have our ways of coping in an unhealthy way. And there are other ways to process. And that's what we really want to, to share is how to process in a healthy way that will not keep these emotions stuck, help them process through and get freedom, which is what we're meant to do. We're all meant to process through our emotions, right? That's what we're meant to do. And you're right. I had some very unhealthy ways. I want to share in my, in part of the book, like some of my unhealthy behaviors of what I did. Yeah. I think you share more a little bit later in the book when it is in our marriage. Cause right now I'm not in this story. Mm-hmm. This is prior to me, but those really, the unhealthy coping really manifested once we were about five, six years into marriage, maybe yeah. even before that three yeah. years. Yeah. So there are some healthy ways that we can process our emotions, peer support, counseling, mm-hmm. therapy, mm-hmm. coaching, going to church and having a friend group around you, getting community and getting involved with that community and having mm-hmm. great relationships with them and sharing with your, with them. Yeah. Even learning that physical activity is a big part of healing. Like our body needs to move. We need to eat healthy, especially after a trauma because we go mm-hmm. in depletion, we go into survival mode. And if we're not getting good rest, eating well, taking good care of our body that also gets depleted. Now we have a mental and a physical depletion that's happening. So that's one way. And and in fact, like that was the heart, the thing I gave up the most was my physical body. Anytime I went through something tough, I would treat my body horribly. I wouldn't eat. I wouldn't get sleep. And I'm, I'm, not eating the right foods, even, um, just not taking good care of myself. Not that you want to be mean to yourself necessarily. No, but it's like, it's like a way of punishment. It is. It's part of shame and condemnation. I believe. Oh yeah, it is. At least that's what's coming to my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, you briefly just mentioned rest, but I, I think we need to highlight that. That's sleep is so important to refill and re re to re-energize our, our body to be able to deal with other things. Some other well, ones are journaling. Well, before you get to that, our okay. brain is meant to wash itself right. every night, but it can't do that unless we're getting six to eight hours of sleep every night. Now, that is a neat discovery that just recently came out in the last 10 years yeah. is that. that is mm-hmm. so, let's talk about that some other time. Not now. Yeah. That's a cool discovery. Yeah. Yeah, so prayer journaling, worshiping, is a great healthy way, just pouring yourself out to God and sharing your emotions with him. Gratitude. Yeah, gratitude Practicing. practice, and especially here's the thing, first thing in the morning. Like right after trauma, when we're in survival, our heart is closed. And gratitude actually takes something. You're not going to feel, like, in fact, you're not going to feel like doing any of these healthy things. What actually 
feels good is to be unhealthy, but it doesn't feel good. <laughs> mm. So you're not going to want to take good care of yourself, but it is so important. And gratitude actually reopens our heart to healing, which is fascinating that God created gratitude. It is the ultimate posture of receiving, which is receiving healing. That if I can't be grateful, I'm closed off to healing. Right. right. Which means I can't process my emotions if I'm closed off. Yeah. So, and that's where I feel like talking and therapy is really helpful after a trauma. There's so many different exercises that your therapist walked you through around trauma. So healing. It was. Yes. I agree EMDR. With you. That's another great that's... tool to use. Love, love EMDR. Yeah. Yeah. I've had it, it done if... several times. I've had it done once. Yeah, we're not trained in in this particular uh, method. If you are having some type of PTSD or, or severe trauma, I highly recommend finding somebody who is specialized in EMDR. Phenomenal ability to process through difficult, hard emotions and traumas that you've yes. experienced in life. But I've also found you have to be open. Yeah. For EMDR to work. Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. You do. Um, I want to talk about one more th healthy thing, and that is helping others. You know, one of the greatest things we can do in, in life is be able to help other humans around us, be able to listen to them and help them in their problems and in their uh, issues that they have going on, even when we're going through our own. You know, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, I think it's verses 3 through 5, it just basically talks about how God is such a God of comfort. Yes, he is. And love. And that he comforts us in our, man, our tough times. Mm -hmm. He draws so, close to the brokenhearted. He does. So that we can go comfort others with the same comfort that God first gave us. Mm, and that is life giving. It is life giving. It's healing. Let me tell you what happens to me because I have this happen where I feel all about me. All these emotions about me, my victimhood about me, woe is me. But if I go talk to another brother and listen to his problems, listen to what he has going on in his life, and I can pray over him and be present with him, I stop thinking about me. I st I'm not important in that anymore. It's mm -hmm. about kingdom work. It's about reaching out to other people. That's a great way to process too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's so life giving. And I imagine you're getting healing around this, just talking about it with me even because it is processing even more emotions for you. right now. Yes. Yes. It and does. I imagine when you wrote this part in the book, it was very healing for you. I'm fact, telling, the whole book has been healing. <laughs> uh, well, I'll tell you how healing is. Not that crying is bad, but that's the first time I think I've ever told that story without crying. Wow. And I've told that story a lot. Wow. And I could tell. I could tell you had this calmness about you. Yeah. And the first time you told me that story, you it, it was like you choked it out yes. years ago. Yeah. That, that story has impacted me for a long time. I bet. Yeah. And so I just want to ask you, have you ever struggled to process your emotions from something that has happened to you? What did you do? What were healthy coping ways of you getting through and processing what happened? And we would love for you to drop that in the comments below, because if we left anything out, that's a healthy way that someone can get healing. We would love for you to share so that others can see what you did as well. And if you choose not to process your emotions in a healthy way, I would love to give a description, like a word picture mm -hmm. of what it could look like in your life when it is not being processed and when your emotions are not being processed in a healthy way. Yeah. So as Travis reads this portion of the book, I would like for you to close your eyes and really put yourself into this word picture that you're about to describe whatever trauma or experience you haven't processed. Imagine that while you're listening. I was told this story soon after seeking therapy. Imagine you're carrying a shovel and wearing a backpack that's open at the top. 
And each time you experience abuse, trauma, pain, suffering, neglect, death, in order to deal with the emotions of these traumatic things, you take your shovel and just imagine you pick up your imaginary poo, which is your emotions, and then you fling it into the opening of the backpack and then move right along with what you are doing. And then when the next circumstance happens, you just repeat. Pick it up, shovel it into the back, full of poop. And it can't be hidden in the pack. Soon, the backpack is full of poop. And it can't be hidden in the pack any longer. It starts overflowing. And when this hypothetical backpack full of poop is overflowing, it not only gets all over me, it gets all over anyone that is close to me. Okay, you can open your eyes. Can you imagine your backpack full of poo? And really look at how does this analogy resonate with your own experiences in life? I mean, just imagine the weight of that backpack increasing over and over. First of all, it's heavy and it's weighted down. Mm -hmm. There is some weight to that poo. Maybe not at first, but over time as it fills up and it is stinky and it's spewing out the top all over everybody around you who cares about you and loves you. You are having an impact by not processing your emotions. The reactions of that poo coming out sometimes looks like anger, rage, passive aggressive behaviors, sarcasm, biting back. like Arr! It can also just look like stonewalling and withdrawing and isolating because maybe I know that there's poo in there and I want to protect everyone else. I'll just keep myself isolated. Another big one is acting out. When I have all that poo on the back of my pack and it is weighted down, I don't like it. I don't want it around me. I want it away from me, but I don't know how to do that. So I drown it in my acting out. Yeah. Behaviors and, and um, yeah, it's behaviors that I do. It's behaviors that you do. To avoid. That will have us avoiding, have us numbing the pain that we are experiencing. Yes. Oh, that's a word right there. So today we have explored a lot of emotional challenges that we face that not only at like first responders like you, but everybody experiences trauma in life. We all face emotional challenges that are really tough. Mm. And we talked about the importance of processing emotions in a healthy way. And then the dangers of coping with that through negative things like humor. Yeah. Yeah, and if you heard some resources that you feel would be really beneficial for your healing, we just encourage you to take advantage of some of the things that we talked about in ways of processing our emotions in a healthy way. And we want to give a special thank you to all first responders, military, hospital workers, nurses, doctors, I mean, EMS workers, there's so many of you that are doing the things that I was mentioning where you're going out and you see, you're seeing the depravity of humans and then you are exposed to it day after day after day yeah. and expected to hold up a certain level of professionalism and integrity and having to deal with these strong things. We just want to say thank you to you. Yeah. You have the ability to give hope to people and some really hopeless situations. And we want to honor you and appreciate yes. you. Yeah, you do not go unnoticed. Thank you for your strength and resilience in bringing hope to the rest of us. Mm. We just want to thank you for joining us today. We hope you will join us next week for more of our story that's unfolding as we go through our book. Episode 10. Episode 10. We'll see you guys then. Bye. Bye. Mm. Should have been ready. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep.
Boom, boom, boom. Knocked it out. Gotta blow it up. Oh. Well, there we go. There we go. That was good. How'd you feel? That was a heavy. I feel okay. Sweaty. Yeah, I'm sweaty too. Yeah. I just don't like talking about that. Yeah. You did great. 